Good day class. Let us now continue with our sample problems. For our second problem, you may pause this video to read the statement of the problem. Take note that in this problem, the ships are traveling at constant velocity. Therefore, the required relative velocity will remain the same at any given time. We are given the magnitude and direction of the velocity of each ship. We are then required to solve for the velocity of ship B with respect to ship A. Let's start our solution by drawing the situation in the problem and focusing first on the displacement that each body can create. At any given time, starting from point O, the ship A will have a displacement S sub A while ship B will have a displacement S sub B. Take note that the observer is on ship A while the observed body is ship B. Therefore, the appropriate drawing of the displacement vector for relative displacement of ship B with respect to ship A should be as follows. The tail will always start from the location of the observer with the arrowhead pointing on the observed body. Notice that for this problem, the motions of the given bodies are not anymore along the same straight line. Rather, the bodies are moving along different course, but still in the same two-dimensional plane. For such problems, our solution will be based on the geometry formed by drawing the vectors. Since what we are required is to solve for relative velocity, we will just differentiate these displacements with respect to time to create our new drawing. Since V sub A and V sub B are given, we can solve for the required relative velocity by applying trigonometry. To get the magnitude of V sub B over A, let us apply cosine law. And then by substitution, we can get the magnitude of 25.18 kph. Since relative velocity is a vector quantity, its direction must also be determined. Based on our new drawing, let's denote by theta the inclination of the relative velocity with respect to horizontal. And then by sine law, we can formulate this equation using the obtained magnitude of relative velocity. With theta as the only unknown, we can now get its value to be equal to 30.36 degrees. Therefore, the relative velocity of ship B with respect to ship A is equal to 25.18 kph, 30.36 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Let us now proceed with our third sample problem. In an elevator shaft, we are given a ball thrown upward from a height of 12 meters and at the same time, an open platform elevator located at the 5 meter level. Let us now denote that all vectors directed upward as positive. The ball has an initial velocity of positive 18 meters per second while the elevator has a constant velocity of positive 2 meters per second. We are then asked to solve for time and location when the two objects collide and the relative velocity of the ball with respect to the elevator at that instant. To start our solution, let us also include the implied given values. The acceleration of the ball due to gravity must be indicated with a negative sign since it is directed downward while the acceleration of the elevator is just equal to zero since it is moving with constant velocity. To solve for the required time and position, let's use again this drawing. You may wonder that as the two objects move upward, this is just one possibility of their collision. The other one is when the ball continues to move upward and then falling back until it collides with the elevator. To avoid such complication, what we will do here is to deal with their positions instead of their travel distances. This follows that whatever path they will take, 
their final position coordinates must be equal with respect to the reference. Later on, this equation will serve as a way to relate the two different motions. Let's start the analysis with the motion of the ball. Using the third kinematic formula, we can express the final position of the ball in terms of time. Let's denote that as equation 1. Next, let's analyze the motion of the elevator. Using the first kinematic formula, we can also express the final position of the elevator in terms of time. And let's denote this equation as equation 2. Since the final position of the ball and of the elevator must be equal, we now equate the two equations and then solving this quadratic, we will get that t should be equal to 3.653 seconds. To solve now for the required location, we substitute the obtained value to equation 2 to get an answer of 12.31 meters from the reference. Let's proceed now with the last question. We are now required to solve for relative velocity of the ball with respect to the elevator at the time that they collide. In this problem, take note that the observer is on the elevator while the observed body is the ball. At 3.653 seconds, we know that velocity of the elevator is still the same. To solve now for the velocity of the ball at this instant, let's use the second kinematic formula. By substitution, we will get its velocity equal to negative 17.84 meters per second. The negative sign indicates that upon collision, the ball is already moving downward, which means that it had attained its maximum height and then fall back. Finally, using the formula for relative velocity, we can now have our final answer equal to negative 19.84 meters per second. The negative sign means that if you are on the elevator, it will appear as if the ball is moving downward at a speed greater than the actual, which is 17.84 meters per second. This happens because the new reference which is the elevator, is moving upward while the ball is moving downward. Therefore, they are both moving towards each other. I hope you learned something new today. Keep learning, keep the faith, and God bless future engineers.